The concept of depreciation can be a little confusing at first, but it's actually quite a simple one. Imagine that in your business you decide to buy a delivery truck to deliver the flowers for your flower shop. If it's going to cost 500,000 Rand in year one, I hope you realize that this vehicle is going to last more than just one year. One would hope that you'd be able to generate an income, maybe 300,000 Rand a year sales or, or um, of your flowers. Hopefully, you would be able to generate an income for a number of years until the truck just becomes too old and dies. And then you would need to obviously dispose of the truck. So if you have a look at it like this, keep in mind that assets are those things which a business has control over and are used to generate an income. As you can see, this truck is generating an income or an economic benefit over a number of years. If you had to just say, well, the truck is 500,000 Rand and leave it at that indefinitely, that means at the end of year five, you are saying that you still have a truck worth 500,000 Rand, which is obviously not the case because we're assuming that at the end of fi year five, this truck is so dilapidated and old and has done so much mileage that it actually can't puff another breath and you have to dispose of it. If then you say, well, it's going to be a cost that I have to use. If you decided to take it all off in year one, can you see that that would also be problematic? Because in that case, you would be saying, well, then I've got a cost of 500,000 in year one to generate an income of 300,000 Rand. So you're immediately making a loss. But then all the other years, there's no cost. That doesn't make sense either. Instead, what you need to do is you need to spread this cost over the period in which you are able to generate an economic benefit. So instead of putting that whole 500,000 Rand in year one or not using it at all, what you have to do is you're going to split it over all the different years that you think it is going to survive and be used and be able to generate your income. Now I've drawn too many arrows, sorry. It's only five years that we are using over here. So, if you were going to just depreciate it in a very simple way, what you can see here is that you would, for example, take off 100,000 Rand each year as your expense, and that means you would have 100,000 in year one, 100,000 in year two, etc., all the way until your vehicle is worth nothing. That is your basic concept of depreciation. What we are doing is we are taking the asset and you are going to write off part of that cost each year as an expense that can get offset against the income. There are a number of ways in which you can calculate the depreciation that you want to write off each year. The two main ones are straight line um, and diminishing balance and then we'll also look at a couple of others. This first one is known as the straight line method or depreciating on the cost price and it's the one that is most commonly used um, and it certainly is the simplest. Basically, all that you need to do is you work out what is the life of this asset and you write off the depreciation over that period of time. In our case, we're assuming that it cost 500,000 Rand to start with, it's going to last five years, and it's going to be worth nothing at the end of it. Of course, in reality, there might be a residual value, in which case you would need to take that into account. Maybe the residual value is 50,000. That means you would only write off 450,000 over the entire life of the asset. In our case, however, we'll just keep it simple so that the numbers are nice and easy to understand. So if I'm taking off the same amount every year, that means in year one, at the beginning, it's worth 500,000. At the end of year one, I suddenly have to depreciate it and it's now only going to be worth 400,000 if I take off a fifth of its value. In year three, it will be 300,000. In year four, 200,000, etc., etc. So that by the end, it is worth nothing after five years of depreciation. So what is happening here is you can see that because you're taking off the same amount every single year, you end up with a straight line if you are drawing a graph of the value of the asset over time. And that is how you get the name straight line. 
If you see them talk about depreciation on cost, it means exactly the same thing. You're still using the same method. You're still going to take off the same depreciation every single year. The only difference is that this time you're going to calculate it based on the cost. So this way, either they might say to you, it's worth 500,000 Rand, it's going to last for five years, and you can work out that it's 100,000 Rand per year, or what can happen is they could say to you, it's calculated as 20% per annum on cost, which actually means exactly the same thing. They are simply saying that if the whole value is 100% and it's only going to last five years, that means that that 20% is worked out as 100% over five years, which gives you 20%. And so therefore, you need to take off 20% of the cost each year, or in this case, 100,000 Rand. If you had a residual value, you would simply say your cost less your residual value to try and work out how much you need to write off and then divide that. So for example, if you had a residual value of 50,000, what you would do then instead is you would say 500,000 minus the 50,000, which would give you 450,000 divided by the five years, which means you would only take off 90,000 Rand each year. That's how you would do that. Right, let's now go and have a look at the second most common method that you need to know. The second type of depreciation calculation that you need to know is when you calculate it on what is known as the diminishing balance. In other words, the balance is getting smaller and smaller. Or it's also known as depreciation on the carrying value or depreciation on book value. This one is a little bit more complex, um, but it's actually not that difficult to understand. However, it's not used as much in practice in reality, simply because the straight line method is just so much easier to use. However, for examination purposes, you do need to use this one, and it's very often asked because it is a little bit trickier. The idea here is that instead of calculating your depreciation as a percentage of your cost, you work out what it's worth each year and you calculate it on that. This is actually a more realistic way of working it out, especially for something like vehicles where it will lose most of the value in the first year of its life, but by the time that it's 9 or 10 years old, the difference in depreciation is not that great and it's much less than it would have been at the beginning of its life. So, to have a look at this, what happens is I've used the same example where our delivery truck cost 500000 but instead I'm going to show you what happens if we decided to use a policy of 20% on carrying value or on the diminished balance instead of using 20% on cost as we just did. In this case, what would happen is year one, the calculation will be exactly the same because the cost and the carrying value are the same thing. There's no depreciation up until this time. So therefore, your yearly depreciation for year one will still be 100,000 and it looks exactly the same, which is why I've also done it in red. However, every other year ends up being a different calculation, which is why they are in different colors. In year two, what we have to do is say, well, this was the value, 400,000. That was the carrying value that we needed to use. And so we'll say 400,000 times 20% means we're only going to depreciate it by 80,000 in year two. So you can see suddenly my slope of my graph is changing because I'm not depreciating it as much as I did in year one as a result of working on the carrying value. In year three, it is actually only worth 320,000, and so that is the value. This point over here where we're starting, that is the value that I will need to use to calculate on my 20% to get 64,000. So it means that, as you can see, your depreciation is just getting smaller and smaller every single year. So this is what it looks like on the graph. And you can see that what's happening is because you're taking it on the carrying value each time, your graph ends up 
um, having a curve. And in fact, when you're using this method of depreciation, your asset can never have a zero value. It will never ever be zero because it will always have 80% of whatever the previous value was is going to be the new carrying value because you're just subtracting 20% each time. So the depreciation just gets smaller and smaller. To calculate your carrying value, you've probably noticed what I was doing, but just to reiterate, to work out that carrying value, what you need to always do is you say the cost price initially, in our case 500,000, minus the total or accumulated depreciation up until that time. Shortly I will explain to you um, accumulated depreciation in a little bit more detail, but I'm just showing it to you over here so that when we come across it later, you will understand it a little bit better. So just remember that your carrying value is saying your original cost minus all the depreciation up until that time. So for example, this 320,000 was taking our original cost of 500,000, but then subtracting the 100 and the 80 to get the 320 carrying value. So those are the two main methods of depreciation that you need to know. The next method of calculating depreciation is one that is actually quite practical. I really like it, but it's not um, used very often and it's not examined very often. It's only certain bodies that actually use it in their curriculum. Um, this idea is saying, let's have a look at um, how much this asset is actually going to produce. So specifically um, production units, if you were, for example, looking at a machine in a factory, but you can also use it for vehicles vehicles by looking at the mileage. So when you're doing depreciation based on the production units, sometimes just understand that they mean mileage, what you do is you're going to take the cost of the item and you're going to divide it up by the total number of units you expected to make in its entire life, or in our case, the total kilometers that have actually been driven. So for what and what you do then is you compare that to how many units were actually manufactured or in our case how many kilometers were actually driven during the year so if we take our vehicle let's use it for the first year but in fact this would be for any year the original cost was 500,000 rand we expect that it is going to be able to drive a total of 300,000 kilometers remember I said we're going to drive it into the ground until it's dead so it's certainly probably not going to last much more than that hopefully it will even make that much and let's pretend that in this year we drove 54,000 kilometers in other words we're now taking what it drove this year as a fraction of the total value and we're using that to then determine that we need to write off 90,000 Rand this year. In my mind this is quite nice it's a very accurate way of looking at it because there might be some years where the asset is used more than others and in that case this would be a suitable method to choose. The last one that we need to look at is a very simple one. This is the revaluation method. This you would use where, for example, you had a number of different tools that are lots and lots of items with each a relatively small value, but in total they have quite a high value and therefore you do need to show it as an asset in your records and you do need to depreciate it over time. However, to depreciate each and every item would be far too time consuming. So instead what is done is you say, well, what was it worth at the beginning of the financial year? What is it worth now? And you compare the two. The difference would then be what you need to write off as the depreciation. This is also quite a nice one because it is very realistic. And remember that the IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, says that they want your accounting records to be fairly presented. In other words, to show the actual situation of your financial affairs. And in this case, that is exactly what you are doing. You are showing your va the value of your asset at what it actually is worth now. Once you've calculated your depreciation, you now need to record it. Remember that what we are trying to do is we're trying to split up the cost of the asset 
over its useful life. So if you look over here, you can see that I've shown the cost of my vehicle, 500000 as a balance in my vehicle's account. I'm just doing rough T accounts here to show you. Please don't ever abbreviate yourselves. Um, you won't get marks for any um, um, items that you show as an abbreviation. You need to write everything in full. Let's have a look at year one. You've calculated your depreciation as 100,000 Rand, which means that you want to show your vehicle's account as a carrying value of 400,000. So what we need to do is we need to reduce the asset. However, historical cost says that we need to keep the vehicle's account at this 500,000. So what we do is we create a second account for accumulated depreciation on vehicles. And what this is, is it's actually a negative asset. See that I'm showing it here with my assets. And remember that assets get bigger on the debit side and smaller on the credit side. And because I need to make assets smaller with this account, I'm going to credit my accumulated depreciation on vehicles with the depreciation that I've calculated for year one. At the same time, I've been taking it out of the asset and I want to create an expense that I can use to offset all my income. So in my depreciation account, I'm going to debit 100,000. This depreciation is an expense account. In other words, it is part of your owner's equity. Owner's equity accounts get smaller on the debit side and bigger on the credit side because they work opposite to assets because they're on the other side of the accounting equation and because this is an expense account that is making equity smaller I'm going to show it on the debit side check yourself you have a debit and a credit so that works once you've recorded it like that what will happen is that you will send this off to the financial statements these two accounts combined will be shown at the carrying value of 400,000 um, in the statement of financial position specifically you would show it as part of your tangible assets note over here your expense accounts would obviously all get sent off to the statement of comprehensive income where that expense can be offset against the income that you will generate from selling your flowers for your flower shop. I do hope that depreciation is not as confusing now as it might have been earlier.